In today's video, we're gonna install smart under cabinet lights in my wife's classroom. Let's get to it. What's up guys and welcome back to Top Shelf Media. So today, we're going to be installing some smart LEDs in my wife's classroom. We're gonna do some smart light strips underneath her cabinets here. And I'm super excited about this because I just, I love LED projects. They're so much fun to, to try and figure out and to get to working with the ESP32 boards and stuff like that. So we're gonna use some aluminum channels with some, some command Velcro on the back just to hold them up underneath the cabinets. Then we're gonna use, like I mentioned, an ESP32 board. I got this little, a box to put it in so that way we don't have kids messing with it and stuff like that. And then we are using the BTF lighting. Uh, I've used these in my office before. I really like these light strips. They're, they're really nice. So first thing we're gonna have to do is clean off the channels with some alcohol. So I have some, I think it's 91% isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol. And uh, so we're gonna use this, wipe down the channels just so that way there's no, no, there's nothing on it. That way we know we're gonna get a good adhesion to it. Why do we need those aluminum strips? Um, so the nice thing about these is one, you could stick the um, light strips to the bottom of your cabinets, but the problem is, is they might not stick well. I found that sticking them to aluminum, at least in the, when I've used them, it, it sticks a little bit better. You stick them right inside the channels here. And it just kind of adheres better to the aluminum than it does the laminate on the cabinets. Um, also, yeah, I know. <laughs> also, if you ever decide you need to move to a different classroom, then we would either have to pull the light strips down and just scrap them because the adhesive wouldn't work anymore. At least this way, with the Velcro command strips on the back, we can pull these down and move them to another classroom. So, oh, uh, so it makes like it reusable. Yeah, yeah, okay. it makes it so it's a little bit more reusable. Um, but yeah, so that's basically it. But let's go ahead and get these things installed. So, like I mentioned, first thing was to wipe down the channels with alcohol and then let them dry for a few minutes. After that, I could start putting on the Velcro command strips. And this was a tedious process, but we made it through. Once that was done, I was able to start attaching the channels to the cabinets. And as you can see here, we went along the back side of the cabinets and we did this for two reasons. First, I wanted a better spill of light on the wall. And second, my wife's a kindergarten teacher. There's less of a chance of a kid getting a hold of this light if it's on the back side. Now, I had previously measured the distance of this cabinet so I knew how long the channels needed to be. So I had pre-cut that first channel that I installed and then I just installed them end to end from there. This was a super easy process, just lining it up right up against the wall. Now that the channels were installed, it was time to wire up the LEDs. And it's at this point of the video when I say, I am not an electrician and I am not going to give you electrical advice. I'm just showing you how I did it. So I started by cutting my wires and by mistake, I cut the wires off the LED strip because apparently I wasn't thinking, but I got wires reconnected to the LED strip using these clear connectors and I'll put links down in the description to these and everything else that I use in this video. Then I could start prepping my wires and getting them connected using Wago connectors. Now it was time to connect the ESP32 board to my laptop so I could get everything set up. One thing that did trip me up a bit was make sure the cable that you're using to install WLED to the board supports data and not just charging. I went through a few cables around my office before I found one that worked. Once WLED was installed and the board was connected to my Wi-Fi, I went into LED preferences so I could check my settings. So for LED output, I want WS281X because I'm using WS2812B LEDs. Then I can set my length, which I believe is gonna come out to about 286 LEDs and then my GPIO was set to two because I used pin D2 on the ESP board for my data cable. After that, I changed the description to West Cabinets because I will eventually be putting more LEDs in her classroom. And then it was time for the moment of truth. And what do you know? They work. I didn't have this issue, but if you change the colors on your lights and the LEDs don't match what you've selected, then go back into LED preferences and change this drop down until they are correct. Now that we know they work, it's time to get them installed. And this was a really simple process. Just peel off the backing and press firmly into the channel. After that, I started the tiring process of putting on the diffuser. And let me tell you, this was a chore. It works really well. It's just really hard to get on. But I made it through and it was time to call this project finish. Here's how it turned out.
Hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and I put some things on screen for you guys to go check out if you guys feel like it. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and I will see you in the next video.